Jesus can do all those things. Amen. 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 That's why we serve a, a higher God. Yes. Amen. 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 Well, God is a good God. Amen. Yes, and it's good to be in front of you once again. I tell you, God is a loving God. I am his messenger. He gave me a message for you. So I will be telling you about the message that God has given me for you. Amen. 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 So we're going to get right into prayer, and then we're going to get right into the word. How about that? Amen. Amen. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, and we thank you, and we thank you for your glory, Lord God. We thank you for the anointing and the presence of the Holy Spirit this morning, Amen. Lord God. And we give you praise, Father, in Jesus' name. We love you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. We take nothing short, but we give you the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. You know, I had a, a, a message from you last week time I was up here, well, I, 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 had, I, I had a message, and the message was to tell you about faith. So it, it was called, What is Faith? And we were talking about, what is faith? So we know faith is to trust God, is to believe in God, uh -huh. but also to accept God. Yes. Now, not tomorrow, not the next day, but now. Even when you first got saved, you had to trust God. That is faith. Because say, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Yes. The evidence things you cannot see. Now you have to trust God now. That's right. That's right. Come on, Pastor. Don't wait until things start happening to you Come on until now. you try to activate your faith. Come on now, dog. Come on now. Say that. Come on now. Yeah. Because that is not the right time. That's right. God wants you to have that now faith. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. That now faith he wants you to have. Amen. Amen. So we talked about that now faith, but the now faith we also talked about a dead faith. And some people do have dead faith. Mm -hmm. But that faith could get back alive. That's right. It can't get back alive. Yes, sir. Some people just just it's more in the flesh than in the spirit wow. at this time. Some people don't walk in the spirit, they walk more in the flesh. Uh -huh. And you can see the flesh all over. Mm -hmm. So you know they're in the flesh. Because God gave you the spirit to see things that you might not want to see, but you might not want to talk about it at that particular time because you don't want the flesh to get all riled up. Yeah, yeah. You know how some flesh is? When you expose them, they want to talk. Yeah. Yeah, they want to fuss. They want to get loud. They want to go on what we call the defense. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? So that's how some flesh is. That's what the flesh do. That's what they do. They want to get on the defense. You know, but God is saying, people with dead faith, we got to continue to work with them mm -hmm. to try to get their faith back. Mm -hmm. Because God don't want to lose you to the other side. Right. He want to keep everyone on the right side. Because there's so many people are dying and going on the other side. And you only get one shot. You don't die and come back. Come on now, talk about it. <laughs> you don't know somebody said the person say he died. When he died, you know, your heart stopped, okay? But they have a couple of minutes to pump their heart to get their heart back to beat. So, you know what I'm saying? But God is a God who wants everyone to see his glory. Yes. Yes. But we know everybody will be able to see it. Because some people refuse to see it. Some people refuse to believe. Some people refuse to trust. Yes. Some people refuse to trust. Mm -hmm. They refuse to trust God. Yes. They refuse to believe in God. But I tell you one thing. 
with my soul and my spirit and anything that I have in me, we're going to trust God. That's right. Yeah. Come on now. Because I have came a long way. And I must have came, I, I have not been to the mountaintop, but I came a long way. I have seen a lot of things in my life. And I know that the things that I saw is the things that I don't want to go back to. Come on now, talk about it. I want to look straight ahead. Yeah. I'm tired of looking backwards. Come on now. I'm tired of looking behind my shoulder seeing what's next. Mm, right. I want to know that my God is with me. Mm, sure. I want to know that my God is with me. Yeah. And I know that for a fact because he has told me I'm with you at all times. Right. The only thing I got to do is believe and trust in the self. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? We got to believe and trust in the self. And then you can have the people who have that world faith. We talk about world faith. Amen. So world faith is we call James 4 and 4. Some people are so caught up in the world that they don't want to be a friend of God. They want to be born into the world than in, in with God. So that was James 4 and 4. That's that world faith. Okay. And the next one is vain faith. Don't let your faith be in vain. What do you mean by that? Don't be a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't be a hypocrite. You know you stink. You know you smelling. You're all smelling. Everything's smelling. <laughs> and you ain't fooling nobody. Yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah. You know you smelling. Yeah. Yeah. Just because a person ain't saying nothing, you don't mean he don't know that you're smelling. Oh, yeah. You better say it, man. Yeah. You know that you're smelling. Jesus. But see, you have to deal with God. I can't deal with God for you. You got to deal with God. Yeah. So when you come to that gate, God going to say, hey, gate closed. <laughs> gate closed. You cannot enter, my brother. You cannot enter, my sister. Gate closed. But Lord, I worship you. I praise you, Lord. I told people about you. You know what he said. Get away from me. Mm -hmm. Amen. Then we have that godly faith, that God faith. Oh my God, that's the one that we want to have. Yes. That God faith. It's that faith in action. It's that love faith. Yes. It's the, see, God loved us so much that he gave us only son. Yes. His only son. Yes. That whoever should believe in him should not pay for help everlasting life. Yes. God wants you to live forever. Yes. See, we know the flesh died. And then the spirit, because God is spirit. Yes. So the spirit must live. So therefore, God said, you will live again. Hallelujah. You will live again. You will live again. Yes. But don't die twice. Come on. Don't die in this flesh, and don't die in the spirit. Yes. Because if you do that, that means that you have not trusted God. You think you're going to live on this earth forever? Hmm. Nah, it don't work like that. Work like I was reading, and in the, in the, in the, in I read the Bible on the Bible, and I read, I started from, I'm starting to read the Bible all, all over again. Yes. I'm starting back in the Old Testament from the beginning. And these people live 950 years, 750 years. My good Lord, how can a person live that long? That's a long time. 900 years? 600 years? You know? My mama 92 and she's she, she, she tell that's my mama used to be nice and healthy. You know? My mama 92, like you see her. I said that she only 92 and they live 750 years. <laughs> but they still had strength. They still were strong in stature. But hey. Time changed. It's a new thing. Amen. It's a new thing. But we got to have that godly faith. Yes, sir. We must have that godly faith. So my message today is how to build up that faith and how to keep it. See, you have to build that faith up. So once you build it up, you got to maintain it. You got to keep it. That's right. You got to keep it. That's right. 
Because the enemy knows your faith is being built up. So he's going to try to bring every negative thing to you to break you down. The enemy want to break you down. But your faith is so strong, he can't touch you. He can't touch you. He know he can't touch you. But he, he going to try and he had a try with everybody because he's never been around a long time and he know all the tricks and trades. But one thing, he don't he don't have authority. Right. He don't have authority. No authority. He might tell you or try to put it in your mind that he got authority. That he, he, no authority. he ain't got no authority. No authority. That's right. The devil is beneath you. That's right. That's right. <laughs> he's beneath you. <laughs> you know? So we got to understand that. We got to understand where we stand with God. That's why we cannot get caught up into this worldly thing, but we got to stay faithful in God with the spiritual thing. Yeah. With the spiritual thing. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. We got to stay faithful to God. Yeah. Because as a same believer, we must accept God's grace. Yeah. We must follow Jesus' instructions to obtain what? Our salvation. Right. We need to obtain our salvation. We need to be saved by the Holy Spirit. We need to be saved. I ain't saying you're saved. I'm saved. Yeah, but a lot of people say they're saved, but that don't mean they're going to go to heaven. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. They say they're saved. That's why the Bible says you shall be saved, not will be saved. See? See, you gotta understand. Now watch this. Shall be saved is a process. Will be saved. Let me tell you what will be saved is. Will be saved is when you know that you know that you know that you're born and you're gonna be with God. Because you have given everything you had to God on this earth. You have trusted God in your lowest and even in your highest. But you still trust God. So that's when you know. So when you will be saved, it's, it's the remaining, it's the balance of that process. Because you have to be processed in everything that you go through. You've got to be processed. But let's say this. Faith's going to teach you a lot of things about life. And life is so important to the believer today. Because every time we wake up in the morning, we see the light. We wake up, we get ready, we go brush our teeth, we take a shower. Some people can't do that. And some people can, can still wake up when they can't go and do all that. But the kind of God we serve, I, I want to drag this across your mind that God is a God of forgiveness. And the only thing you have to do is repent to him and he will forgive you. But we must get back on track. We must get back on track. We must get back with God. We must get back with God. Amen? Because your faith is no disease, but a gift from God. And that's what your faith is. And that gift is to encourage you. Encourage the believers. That's the, the gift. God wants to keep you encouraged. See, I come to you as a messenger from God. And my message is to encourage you in everything you do. Whatever you decide to do, whatever you're doing, you might be doing, trying to start some business, you might be trying to do some. Be encouraged. And when you ask God, ask him in faith. Right. Ask him in faith. Because faith that God has given, that gift he's given you can move anything out of your way. Right. It can move anything out of your way if you will let it. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you have to believe it. Right. You have to trust it. Right. And you have to accept it. Right. Right. Amen? Amen? You have to accept it. Right. And that's what we have to do. Because the faith in the Holy Spirit, they go hand in hand. And we know the Holy Spirit is a divine man of God, or a divine person of God. He is God that dwells in us. 
That's the Holy Spirit. He dwells in us. That's what God is in you. Once you get saved, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit come into you. God is in your life. He's in your life. He's dwelling in you. You're walking with God. Hallelujah. And one thing about God is He's gonna always speak the truth to you. He's not gonna never have you do anything outside of His will. Okay, so when you start doing that crazy stuff, that's not God. Mm -hmm. That means that you are trying, you're doing what you call the hokey pokey. You're playing on a borderline. You got one foot in, one foot out. You still want to dance. Mm -hmm. still trying to dance. Yeah, you're, oh. trying to, you're still trying to dance. But that's not what God wants you to be. Ephesians 2 and 8 says, well, We are saved by this and the grace of God. So faith don't just come by praying. Faith just don't come by fasting. Faith just don't come by laying of hands. But faith do come by hearing, trusting, believing the word of God. That's what faith comes by. Yeah. You have to hear the word. You have to go hear the word. We go to church in the middle. Word about the You go to church. You hear the word of God. You have to now you have to once you hear, you have to believe it. You have to believe it. And then once you start believing, you have to trust it. You have to trust God. And when you pray to God, trust that He's going to come to you. Yeah. Trust it. Believe it. Amen? Amen. Abraham and Sarah had the same problem. They had the same problem. They went through the same thing. Even though Abraham was a man way old and Sarah was a woman that was old. They said she was barren. That barren means that she was she was dried up. She couldn't have no kids. That day was I'm girl. She was you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to say only God can turn that around. That's why you gotta know that God is real. Let's let it, look at it. We ain't gonna go, we ain't gonna go look, we ain't gonna go to Genesis before. We're gonna go to Hebrew. Let's go to Hebrew. And we're gonna start at 11 and 11. And this is what Paul is talking about. See, Paul wrote the, uh, the, the le some letters. He wrote it to the Hebrews, he wrote it to the Corinthians, he wrote different letters. Why? Paul wrote letters to encourage the people, to encourage the Jewish people. They curse them. Well, you do what? They keep their faith and to maintain their faith. So Paul wrote these letters. So look what Paul was. Paul went back and he was telling them about in the Old Testament. He was telling them about Sarah and Abraham. So if you there at Hebrews 11, 11, and this one said, it said it was by faith that even Sarah was able was able to have a child. Though she was barren and was too old, she believed. She believed. Yeah. Amen? Amen? She believed. So you have to believe. So whatever you're praying to God, you believe. Don't, you don't let the enemy put any doubt in your mind. You believe that God will keep his promise because God always keeps his promise. Yes, he Amen? God is so faithful. He don't know how to be unfaithful. He don't know how to be unfaithful. God is faithful. And 12 said, and so a whole nation came from this one man who was as good as dead. Good as dead. He was trying to love Hey. My God. Listen. He was good as dead. He was, he was dried up too. He was, he was he was counting, hey, he, you know, the, the, the town was starting to fall down on him. Amen? But he was as good as dead, too. Listen, a nation with so many people that like the stars in the sky and the sand of the seashore, uh -huh. there is no way to count. Count. No way. Amen? No way. So, you know, 
Paul was telling us, and Paul was saying that even though Sarah and Abraham had faith, look what happened to them. So he was telling the Hebrews that, and he wrote this letter, that you can have faith. Just maintain your faith, but don't lose your faith. Amen? He said, don't lose your faith. Don't lose your faith. Don't return to your former way. Don't go back doing the same thing you used to do. Because that's what the enemy wants. Yes. He wants you to go back. Oh, this ain't happening for you. This ain't good for you. This ain't happening. Ain't nothing happening. Ain't nothing happening. But he wants you to go back. Doing your old little thing. And you know it's against God. See, God has laws. Yes, he do. And then you continue to break his laws. They're going to be some consequences. That's right. Sure will be. And you're going to wonder why is this happening, but he was going to say, I'm, I'm sparing your life, but I'm showing you something. My God. He's sparing your life, but he's showing you something. He's taking you through something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just to teach you. Just to teach us. Yes. Amen? So, we have to understand. And look, Paul said, and, and he wrote in Hebrew 11 and 1, he said, we must have that now faith, mm -hmm. which is to give you the assurance. This faith gives you an assurance and the confidence in things hoped for. It's convictions for you to keep believing in your faith. Yes. He wants you to be, keep, continue believing in your faith. Yes. Believe. The all the things you've been praying about it shall come to pass. But you must believe. Paul said, remember how things was. Remember when you was going through those those, those times you had that man, you had that what girl, and you couldn't get rid of them, and they were treating you bad, and you had this house, and you were trying to get moved into the house, you couldn't get in there, or you this job, you were trying to get this job, and you couldn't get this job, you know, and they were taking you some some things. He said, "Remember how times were. Remember, but you continue to pray." And them doors started to open. He said, them doors started to open. Yeah. Remember those things. He said, keep believing. Keep believing. Yes. He said, don't throw away your confidence. That's right. That's what he tells us. He said, don't throw away your confidence in Jesus. Right. In other words, don't drop the baton. Come on, man. Yeah. Mm. Come on. Okay? Bless your soul. Why? Because Jesus came to save it. Mm -hmm. Jesus wants us to pick up the, the Holy Spirit for time and run with it. Say, you have the confidence. You have confidence in yourself. He said, you have confidence in yourself. You have confidence. Don't let nobody tell you you don't have confidence. You have confidence in yourself. Yes. You have the ability to do anything you want to do. Yes. You have the ability. Yes. But you must trust it. Amen. 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 Well, go, let's go to Hebrew. I want to show y'all this because y'all looking at me like that. I, I, I don't got to believe that, my pastor. I don't believe that. So go to Hebrew 10 to 35. Yeah. You don't believe the word, right? Everybody believe the word? Amen. Okay, all right. As long as you believe the word. Go to 10 to 35. So it says, look at it, it says, it says, so do you not throw away this confidence? That's the confidence you have in yourself. That's the ability that God has placed in you. See, everybody has a gift. You have, everyone has a special gift. You have special abilities. The only thing you got to do is continue to knock on those doors, those ability doors, and those doors will open for you. But you got to trust. You got to believe. Amen. He said, remember the great reward it brings you. Patient endurance is what you need now. You need patience yes. so that you will continue to do God's will. Yes. Then you will receive all that he has promised. Yes. Amen. All that he has promised. Well, well look what um, look what 37 says. But in just a little while, 
the coming one will the coming one will come and and not delay. Yeah. And and my righteousness one will live by what faith. faith. Yeah. We shall live by faith. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But I will take no pleasure in anyone who turn away. Come on, man. Come on, don't quit. Yeah. Don't give up on God. That's right, that's right. Just continue to press, press, yeah. press. Yeah. But we are not like those who turn away from God to their own destruction. Their own destruction. Come on. Their own destruction. Yes. We are the faithful ones. Come on, we are the faithful ones. Whose soul will what be saved? Yes. Yes. Jesus came to save your soul. But you keep dropping the baton. You keep dropping the baton. Amen. See, God has revealed his will to us. And that will is for us to not live in sin. That's the will. God don't want to live in sin. He don't want us living in sin. Sin could be anything that is not of God. And you know what sin is. Because you know the difference between right and wrong. You know the difference. Amen? We're not babies. But he wants you to believe in John 3, 6, 16, which is what? God so loved the world that he gave his what? His son. Only his son. That whoever should believe in him should not perish but have what? Everlasting life. Amen? Yes. And then he wants you to remember Roman 10 and 9. Now you must declare that Jesus, that Jesus is what? Yes. Lord. Yes. You must declare that. And believe what? In your heart. Yes. What? That he was raised from the dead. Right? Mm -hmm. And it said you shall be saved. Not will be saved, but you shall be saved. Because we say what? Shall is a process. And will is when you finish the process. Mm -hmm. yeah. You got to finish the process. A lot of people say, I'm saved. Yeah, I'm saved. They shall, they shall be saved. Because yeah. will is when you finish the process. Right. You must finish the process. Come on, break it down fast. You can't say, okay, I'm saved now, but now I want to go back and do the things I used to do. Come on, Dad. Break it down to us. Come on. So now you're back in the club. So you think you say, shall I go back to the altar? Yeah, you should go back to the altar. <laughs> exactly. You've been in the club dance and doing all the hoodoo do and doing all that crazy stuff. Yeah. You should yeah, you should go back to the altar. That's right. And ask God for forgiveness. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You should go back. That's right. Because he counted you as zero. Come on, man. You're on the negative no, side, but you're on the negative side now. Uh -huh. Okay? He don't put you on the negative side because why? You have not asked for forgiveness yet. Uh huh. Come on, come on. You need, you need to ask for forgiveness. Ask for forgiveness. That's right. Yeah, you gotta repent. Yes, hey Amen. You got to repent. Yes. We must repent to God. That's why we have to finish the process. Finish. See, your light had just came on. And it's rolling. Rolling. You know how to roll like a motion picture? That's your light. Lights, camera, and action. Action. So now you're acting. Acting, huh? Yeah, you're acting now. I got great Yeah. You're acting. And, and a lot of us do that. You know, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, you, get, you go to, to, to church, a lot of men stay, they're actors. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> That's all they is. Yeah, great actors too. A lot of men in church is actors. <laughs> yeah, they get the Grammy. Uh -huh. They're trying to get, they're trying to get their Grammy and they're trying to get their Oscar. Uh -huh. yeah. But they get it from who? They get it from the devil. Uh -huh. yeah. That's where they're getting it from. They getting their Grammy and they Oscar from the devil because they not getting it from God. Right. Amen. <laughs> we can't allow that. We cannot allow that. We have to stand strong. 
Your faith must grow strong. Your faith must grow strong. Your faith must continue to grow strong in God. How do you do that, Pastor? Well, you got to go to church. You got to hear the word. You got to let that word penetrate your spirit. Yeah. Stop allowing the other things to attack your flesh, but let your let the word penetrate your spirit. Yes. It's the word's going to set you free. It's the word's going to set you free. Stop dropping the baton. Stop dropping the baton. Stop dropping the baton. Amen. Stop dropping it. Why? Because the other Hebrew, I think eleven and one said, "Without faith, it's impossible to please me." Right? He said, "You can't please me without faith." So we know that faith is 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 up there. Faith is up there. Faith is up there. And the Holy Spirit they work hand in hand. Faith is up there. And please don't let your faith be in disagreement with another believer. I see that a lot on TV. I see that a lot on they, they be talking about other people, you know, other believers talking about other believers. That is not faith. That is not what God wants us to talk about. Amen. Over God's word. I don't want you arguing over this word. That's right. That's right. Amen. The Timothy 2 and 15 said, We all have to show ourselves approved by who? God. Amen. Need not be ashamed, but rightly divided by the word of what? Truth. That's what we have to. Amen. Just think about it. God will always be faithful. Go to Timothy 2 and, and, and 2 and 7. 2 Timothy. Let's go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 2 and 7. He said, just think about it. Just think about it. Think about what I'm saying. The Lord would help you understand all these things. He will help you. Always remember that Christ, Jesus Christ, a descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. This is the good news I preach, he said. And because I preach this good news, I am suffering and have been changed like a criminal. So you're going you're gonna to go through some things. Yeah. We all going to go through some things. Yes, sir. But the word of God cannot be changed. Cannot be changed. That's right. You can't change this word. Cannot be changed. So I am willing to endure anything mm. if it will bring salvation and eternal glory in Christ Jesus. Mm. To those who have God have chosen. My God. You have been chosen by God. Yes. 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 That's why you're here. You have been chosen by God. Yes. God know you was going to be here. Yes. All that stuff came your way. God said, no, you can't have her. You can't have her. You can't have him. You can't have him because they need to be up in a place. I have chosen them. They need to be there. Amen? He said, this is a trustworthy saying. If we die with him, we will also live with him. But if we endure hardship, we will reign with him. If we deny him, he will what? Deny us. Deny us. That's right. That's the word. What do we say here? If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful. My God. He remains faithful, but he cannot deny who he is. My God. That's good. My God. So, God continue to want you to get saved. Yes, yes. He just wants to repent. He just wants to repent. Amen? Amen. He just wants us to repent. That's all he wants from us, to repent. But look what 14 say. Remind everyone about these things and command them in God's presence to stop fighting over words. Mm -hmm. I'm fighting over God's words. That's right. That's right. Such arguments are useless and they cannot ruin and they can ruin those who hear them. That's right. That's 
That's why you got to be careful what you hear because you be hearing people going across the club. You don't know who to believe. You just, you just backwards and forward with them. And it can ruin you. So you got to be careful. Amen? Amen. We got to be careful. We got to be careful. Why? Because we have the gift of faith, which is love, mm-hmm. peace, patience, and kindness. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Kindness. Yeah. We got to be kind. Yeah. My God. We do a God show fellowship in love, peace, and kindness. Not in disagreement. Not in confrontation. Do you know that that's how war starts? War starts in the streets. <laughs> Young men fight each other because they have a disagreement. Yeah. Young men go on doing drive-bys because of what? Disagreement. Yeah. Right. It starts in the streets. That's where it started. Yeah. Amen? And then it goes in the world. You got the world bombing each other because of disagreement. Yeah. Competition, disagreement. That's what the world is doing. And then they say it goes into the church. You must oh, yeah. Say it. it goes oh, to the church. Yes, it yeah. does. It goes to the church. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And they even say it goes in your house, too. You got yeah. war in your house. Uh-huh. Yeah. Dis- disagreement. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. A war is a disagreement. Mm-hmm. If you have a disagreement, you have a war. You have a competition. You, you may have an argument. That's what you have. You can have that with your, your spouse or your child. Mm-hmm. We have to trust and know that we are children of God. Amen. 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 God said, I just want y'all to be holy. That's all I want for y'all. I just want y'all to be holy. Yeah. He said he would judge the one outside of the box and who claimed to be inside the box. He would judge. Who claimed to be inside. Yeah. They're actually outside. Yes. He would that's who he would judge. He would judge. At first Corinthians 5 and 12, they say not, it's not your responsibility to judge outsiders. So what are the pastor talking about people on, uh, on at another church? Hmm. Why are you judging somebody else's church? You should be judging people under your own umbrella. <laughs> Instead of judging people outside. That's what it's saying here. Mm. Don't judge people outside of your church. You're in error. That's right. If you want to judge somebody, judge people under your church. What are they doing in your house? That's right. You better say it, preacher. What are they doing in your house? Come on. Are they living right? Come on. Under your roof? Are they living right? Mm. That's who you should be judging. Mm. 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 It's not your responsibility to judge outside. It's your responsibility to judge those inside your own church. Your own right. church. That's the word. Right. That's the word. Your own church. Amen. Oh, my God. But the, the, the Bible says, you know what? Now everyone who, who called out to me will enter the kingdom of, of heaven. That's what the word said. Yes. Not everyone who called out to me will enter the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. He always, he already know who his true disciples are. That's right. He already know. He always, he already know. He know who's going to miss it and hit. That's right. He know. Yeah, he know. Yes, he already know. You don't believe? Go to Matthew seven and twenty one. We're going to get this last scripture. In. 7 and 21. Matthews. 7 and 21. And when you read this, I want you to really look at it. He said, not everyone who called out to me, and this Jesus said, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. Will enter. Mm-hmm. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and perform many miracles in your name. What would he say? But I will reply, I never knew you. 
Get away from me. You who break God's law. You who break God's laws. Let God the house be a house of worship. Not confrontation. Not disagreement. Let your own house be a, a house of worship. Not confrontation. Not disagreement. Your own house. Amen. Because your house is being placed on a solid foundation. A solid foundation. And how you do that? You got to know that if you and my house, we worship God. We worship God in my house. We don't have no, none of this bad spirit flying through this house. No, you got to rebuke it. You got to put it all on it. And when they go to sleep, you got to continue putting it all on it. That's right. Slap them up, rub them down. Oh, no. You got to, you got to hold them down. Hold them down. Amen. We got to hold them down. You can't allow this stuff to be happening in our house. Those are spirits. And the demons running everywhere. Just look at the news. They're running everywhere. Those demons are running everywhere. And they are trying to come in your house. They're trying to come in your house. But you are spirit filled. Bible talking. What are you doing? You are allowing this stuff to happen in your house? Hmm. You gotta start speaking the tongue. That's right. You gotta start rebuking that stuff. That's right. That's right. Don't let that stuff just come in your house and have a free time. That's right. Uh-uh, devil, yeah. you gotta get out of here. Well, you gotta go. You gotta get out of here. Mm-hmm. You gotta tell that devil he got to go. That's right. Oh, you must say the man say, I ain't no devil. Boy. You sure I can like one. You sure I can like one. I'm gonna call it what it is. Right, call it out. I'm gonna call it what it is. If you acting like a devil, I'm gonna call it a devil. That's right. Come on, man. Well, I say one thing: you can't stay here. That's right. Not with this crazy stuff. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. You can't even know. Don't let that enemy in your house. That's right. No, we gotta put them out. That's right. Man. Then you got these kids running around shooting each other, drive by. There's wars all in the streets. And then I'm gonna let it come into my house? No, I'm not letting it come in my house. Try Amen. Amen. Don't let that stuff in your house. My God. I, I just pray you see something from this. I, I tell you, faith is faith, you gotta have faith in God. Amen. We must have faith in God. It's so important that you have faith in God. Yes. Because your faith is gonna carry you a long way. Right. Your faith is gonna carry you a long way. That's right. Your faith is going to move mountains. Your faith is going to move mountains. Your faith is going to show you the blessing of God. Your faith is going to show you God's blessing. And that's what we have to do. Amen? Amen. So Facebook, I pray that you receive some from this. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, God is a good God. Woman 10 and 9. If you accept Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, you know that he, God raised him from the dead. Accept him. Believe him. Yes. Right. Now you got to go and you got to hear his word. Yes. You got to hear God's word. You know, you got to go You go to Bible study, you go to church, but you got to hear the word of God. So it helps build up your faith. God bless you until we see you again. So let me say, let me go ahead and pray.